For those of us who don't know what BDSM stands for... Thank you. Actually, I think that you probably have never watched Billions. Oh. (laughs) But I, you know, I didn't get into the actual details or pin a name to anybody, okay? (laughs) Pin pin the the ED on the donkey. (laughs) That's right, you know, so... Hello, everyone. Welcome to Silver and Sensational. I'm your host, Jessica Lynn Verde. I'm the producer of this show, and I am just one of the many uh, adulating fans. Is that a Uh, word, Lois? (laughs) Adulating? Oh, my. If I were a true narcissist, this would be all that I would expect. (laughs) Well, Nothing less than adulation. You get it regardless of your narcissism. And our amazing host who we love is Lois Mills. Hello, everybody. It's I, the Low or Lois, and welcome and thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to have quite a show today. What do you think, Jessica? I think it's going to be very titillating, Lois. But before we get to there, another titillating thing that we have to talk about is our runway to getting 2,500 subscribers. We're chipping away. Once we get to 2,500 subscribers, we're going to kick off our Jones Road Miracle Bomb giveaway. So that's pretty exciting, wouldn't you say? I would say so. It is damn exciting and a really, really fine gift. So Jessica, describe what they're going to be able to do with 12, not two, not four, but 12 colors. I I don't know who wouldn't be excited about this because you might like splurge to buy one Jones Road Miracle Bomb to see if it looks good on your skin or you might try your friends. This Gets you the whole Miracle Bomb collection, every color under the sun, and the two that they just added to their lineup. And so if you're going on that trip, you might want to do the bronze or the sun kiss. And if you're staying at home, you want to do all natural. You have all 12, so you could do that. And I don't think you'll ever need a new Miracle Bomb ever again with this gift. So all you have to do right now is click subscribe And you might want to click the notification bell so that you know when we hit 2,500 subscribers, Mm -hmm. which you could help us get 2,500 subscribers by letting your friend know about this channel. But once we do hit 2,500 subscribers, we'll tell you how the, the easy ways you can get into that giveaway contest. Ugh. So jealous, Lois. I'm going to subscribe and resubscribe and submit to the, to the giveaway (laughs) and cross my fingers. Uh, well, but we'll probably order ourselves a miracle bomb in that order as well, too. Well, I've I've just I just received the new flushed, Ooh. and then I decided to get the new sun kissed. So I'm doing that. It's on its way. Oh. So right now, I think I have about with the when the new one arrives, I'll have about six of them. And you'll use them. Oh yeah, and you know because there's so much. They last forever, and a few of the makeup artists I watch on YouTube, uh, so far, everybody who's used them loves them because it's sort of a treatment as well as giving your face some color. So it's definitely something that um, I think everybody's going to love. Let your friends know that we're doing this really cool giveaway Mm -hmm. that, that we can't wait for you to win, and let's get back to the show. So Lois... I am, we're on this journey of talking about sex. So the next few episodes that we're doing is all about the sex. And we're really talking to you fabulous over 50 years, whether you have been having sex and it's uncomfortable and you want to make sure it's good or what are the health benefits or you're just coming back into the sex world after watching our dating series and you're like, well, I don't know what's going on out there or if I can do all the moves. This is a particularly interesting topic we're we're covering today. Yeah, and one that uh, in doing my research, I really learned a great deal. The, well, the thing that excited me about this too is I have fantasies, you know, I... But then I wonder, well, do I fulfill them? And if I don't, will I have not lived life to the fullest? And are are they only fantasies or is it something I need to do? So what is the sexual fantasy of it all? 
Well, you know, they can, they really are a normal part of life. Mm. And it doesn't make a difference whether they stay as fantasies or you try to act them out. It all depends on the person, I think, don't you? Sure. I, you know, I don't think society makes you feel that way. I've no, always interpreted no. that sexual fantasies is this thing uh, that you you sh- you 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 really desire that you that if you if you accomplish it it's like the holy grail of sex and i don't i it's actually helpful to hear that that maybe it can't just be a fantasy and just allow that to live in your back in the back of your head well yeah you know now some of the co- most common fantasies Ooh. are being dominated mm. uh, which i would not being the control freak that doesn't have any appeal to me. Sure. Uh, now I'm not gonna I'm not gonna let you people know what appeals and doesn't appeal to me. But the first one, given my personality, and we'll get into that later, being dominated isn't something that appeals to me. But and good for you if and if any of these appeal to you. We're not here to judge sexual fantasies. No, we're just sharing we're what sharing, are common. And, you know, having threesomes, another big sexual sure. fantasy. Having sex with other women. If you're another, a woman, or if is, you're right. Oh, actually. Well, so does that apply to a man who's in a relationship, or does that apply? To women fantasizing it's, about women. It, in, the, in the vein that I read it, it was women with other women, sure. you know. So, I think that's pretty common, actually. Yeah. Uh, rough sex and, you know, oh. sex in public places. Oh. So generally speaking, either you have sexual fantasies or you don't. And it's kind of like either you have, you know, it depends, again, on the person because some people... You know, they don't have sex at all. Doesn't bother them. Maybe they have sexual fantasies in its place. Maybe not. I Every, didn't think about that. Like the asexual human may yeah, not well, be as wow. That yeah, makes so much sense. Exactly. And you know, one of the things, and I don't know. I'd like to hear from the other silvers out there. But you know, I'm of the feeling and the, of the understanding that people in our particular generation you know, didn't feel comfortable and certainly didn't talk among themselves about sexual fantasies. It's not a very comfortable thing even today to talk about sex and what you think about it or what is interesting, you know. I I actually talk about it quite openly, and my best friend also does. And and we kind of bring that part of each other out. And he referred to me as sex positive, and I would have never called myself sex positive but then i realized by just being someone who talks about it despite the taboo that kind of embodies sex positivity well i have to say that i used to be uh i used to throw out more sexual innuendos Mm. uh, when i was younger than i do now sure i've just gotten away from it you know but in terms of uh Actually discussing my sexual life with another person, that's something I never did. That's a subject that I never discussed with anyone. So do you think that was a good thing? Did that help you? Because I, I think there's a, lot of, there's a lot of societal pressure in there too. Does that, could you agree to that? Societal pressure to speak or not to, to speak? To be, to not to speak, like as a woman. Yes. Like, so oh. I think, so sexual, so let me just like p- paint this for you. Cause I'm similar. I know when sexual innuendo benefits me in a social situation, everyone thinks I'm the funny chick and not, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's a so- societal thing. And then not, but not talking about sex or being crude or being a pig or whatever. Could that have been the reason why you didn't share that? Or is it was it really just that personal to you? No, it was that personal to me. Ah. You know, I don't like to discuss two subjects. I don't like to discuss money ah. other than the general, oh, that restaurant is expensive, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, in terms of personal finances, sure, I don't sure. like to discuss that. And I don't like to discuss my sex life. It's, it, it, I, and I can't. I just find those two things to be personal, and I don't really wish to share them. 
I think that's wonderful. And I just wanted to clarify which, which, which it was, because I will say this, as I've matured into, uh, you know, my lifelong partnership, which is what I'm hoping out of my current relationship, I don't want to tell people what, what we're doing and I don't need to do that. So that has shifted for me as well. No, I mean, I mean, I may, you know, generalize and say, oh, you know, as I have, and I think our last episode or one of the last episodes, you know, the number of men I encountered with erectile dysfunction. Sure. That, that okay. is something maybe one could glean from this information. <laughs> but yeah, I, sure. you know, I didn't get into the actual details or pin a name to anybody. Okay? <laughs> pin, pin the, the, uh, the ED on the donkey. <laughs> That's right. You know, so anyway, um, so I want to share with all of you out there, and I will be reading some of this because it's, it's just too interesting for me to ad lib it. Okay, I love that. Okay, so this is from a psychologist and sex researcher by the name of Justin Laymiller. Oh. And he found that 59% of women fantasize about sex with other women. I'm, I'm really not surprised about that. No, not now, at all. I wish I knew that at a younger age, though, Lois. Because you thought you were either gay or at least bisexual, right? I mean, and it, and, yeah. and it doesn't mean that at all. I just wish that was more common knowledge, but that's all. I, I really do, too, because, you know, so, again, I'm going to say these fantasies don't mean you're bisexual or that, uh, you know, that you're a, what would you call it? You know, a lesbian afraid to come out of the closet? Sure, sure. So, sure. you know, that's just what so I thought. You, well, just so everybody, rest assured, fantasies don't always translate into behavior. Whew. And when you talk about 59% of women having fantasies of having sex with another woman, that's a pretty that's a pretty high percentage. So, that's normal. At so that it, point. It really falls into normal. I really now, think Now, here's so. the part that I read. This is why I chose this person above all others to relate his findings is because this one topic really caught my attention. Your personality may dictate your fantasies. I find that... Fascinating. I, I was fascinated. So please, I'm not going to go through all of it. Again, his name is Justin Lay Miller, L-E-H-M-I-L-L-E-R, if you want to do a more in-depth look into it. But let me start with what he says. Overall, our fantasies appear to reflect who we are and seem to be designed to meet our own unique psychological needs. He found that people with different personalities tend to fantasize about very different things. And for example, people are who are more extroverted and outgoing fantasize more about group sex and non-monogamy. That huh? is fascinating. And this makes sense because they like meeting new people. <laughs> That's what a hell of a way to meet somebody. Yeah. And then I'll go on to the next one for a moment. And then people, this is really, people who have more concern for the well-being of others tend to fantasize less about BDSM. Whoa. Infidel infidelity and emotionless sex. Now. Wow. For those of us who don't know what BDSM stands for. Thank you. Actually, I think that you probably have never watched Billions. Oh. <laughs> BDSM is an abbreviation for bondage and discipline, dominance and submission, sadism and masochism. So it makes sense that someone who who is a caretaker naturally doesn't want to hurt anybody. Wow. You know, I'm going to um apply this to another very smart person who you may have heard of before, um Esther Perel. 
Oh, she, gosh, yes. Yes, she's a, uh, she is a marriage counselor. Correct. Is she not? Yes. And she does a TED Talk about um, cheating. And she talks about how the cheater is cheating with his psycho- psychological needs rather than on you. So if you never got with the bad boy, you're probably going to, you're more inclined to, to find the bad boy that you're going to cheat with. Or if you were never with the sex pot, that you're satisfying a psychological need rather than cheating on the person, which is mm-hmm. really what Esther uh, tell that out. to tell that to the ongoing sexual partner and see how they buy that line of thinking. To I her did. credit, she does say that you still have to make the decision whether you want to work through the problem or not, but <laughs> <laughs> she's not. I want to hear, I'm going to come, somebody's going to come home to their husband and say, I didn't cheat on you. I really was cheating on my, my psychological need for something I hadn't fulfilled in an earlier life. I regret really- giving them a, uh, an excuse, Lois. <laughs> Well, no, but that's exactly it. And then, and just to like, it's a little off topic, but that's what she's talking about is why do we take it so personally that they've cheated on us? Because it used to be sex and marriage was a, was a property transfer. And now because it's not, it is an emotional transfer. So of course we're going to take it emotionally and personally. So I just thought it's certainly not going to deaden the feelings one experiences, but I feel like since sex is involved in both of those things, it's not surprising that your personality plays a role into what you desire, ultimately. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, like as an example, I I guess he believes that introverted people may be more outgoing in their fantasies. That's fascinating. Yeah, while anxious people might be more relaxed. Wow. Uh, which I guess, you know, now this I can, you know, this I really understand because, you know, we all want to be something we're not. Mm. You know, we we all want to be, if we're very introverted, you know, we look with uh, admiration at someone who walks in a room and just, you know, extends their hand and says, hi, I'm, you know, blah, blah, and uh I can't wait to hear more about you. And, you know, I mean, there are those people that, um, you know, I I know I can think of two people that I have encountered in the last uh, two years that I say to them, one really should bottle your personality because even though I see them in fleeting moments, they have such an up effect for me, you know, I mean, that, that you just want to bottle them. And sure. so I can imagine, you know, whether you're, you know, it, it goes along, whether it's sexual fantasizing or just daydreaming, which in, you know, is pretty much fantasizing sure. that you generally are something other than you are. Yeah. I, I So just to your point, I've had a great love affair love hate affair with introverts because I don't understand them and I want to so badly, but I'm drawn to them. So I really say like when, when I meet an introvert that particularly interests me, I always say you guys are the great challenge of my life. And it's so, because <laughs> they are <laughs> the conquering of the introvert. Um, so it would make sense that uh, I, what I love about this Lois too, is it doesn't really, these fantasies aren't nefarious. They're just what ifs. There's just an element of, well, I wonder if I was this, could this have been the way? Or what would it have been like at that point? Because ultimately, you're going to pursue what derives pleasure for you. And maybe if you do these fantasies, perhaps they're not going to be as good as what you think they're going to be. Has he, does he talk about that at all? Well, we, we go from fantasy to reality. And the first thing is, you know, a question. Um, now, I know what I would do, but let me ask you what you would do. Would you or should you share your fantasies with your partner? Wow. It's a great question. I truly believe that if you're with the right partner, you can talk about these things um, and not receive guff from them. 
because when you're with somebody that doesn't understand you're sharing something from a fantasy realm and they give you a hard time about that, I don't know that that that's someone you I don't know that that's a long term partner. I will say this though. There's one, there's some fantasy I, I wouldn't tell him about because it's not important. But if there's ones that I could act out with him, then maybe. Okay, I see where you're going with it. And I really, I agree wholeheartedly with that. I would be very careful in what fantasy I would share with the partner. If I have like a fleeting, listen, we're not dead, you know? And if I have a fleeting thought of, oh, I wonder what that guy would be like in bed, I'm not going to share that with my partner. That's not that's not fair to my partner. Okay, my point exactly. Now back to Lay Miller. He recommends starting slow by sharing a less adventuresome fantasy before delving into deeper or more taboo topics so, ah, interesting and then so i'd say before that before you even go there you before you open your mouth your pandora's mouth <laughs> exactly <laughs> you better be absolutely sure that you want to make that into a reality wow. so if you're fan now i'm going to tell you this straight away I've never met a man who wanted to do a threesome with another guy in bed. Sure. Okay. They're there. The guys, those guys exist, but I can, so uh, if, I can understand that. If that's that. your fantasy, mm, I wouldn't go there. There's but also then, some fantasies you should accomplish while not in a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> I think there are different fantasies. I, I think that that is... Very sage advice from you, my dear. Very, very sage. So um, now, I happen to know of someone, and I spoke of this long, long time ago, because it was something I had uh, written a story about, oh. uh, which can be found on medium.com. But um, I did know a couple. The wife who wanted to keep her husband uh, very interested in um, keeping his weenie at home. Ah, ah. And she was somewhat of a control freak as well. So she would find people for him. Uh huh. And wow. Yeah. And so she did the vetting, and wow. then she brought them home, and then they could have their threesome, and he could have his fantasy, and she was in total control yep. of who he was with. And then there were times she did not want to participate, and so she sat in the living room while he and the uh, vetted individual wow. got it on. Wow. It takes all kinds, Lois. It, you took the words right out of my mouth. I mean, it's the only person I've ever known uh, who has shared this. I mean, maybe there are other people. Maybe Yo the Yoko most Ono did this actually with John. So yes. Well, they, you know, Yoko and the and again, I'm not saying even though she's she's now in another on the other side, as we say, <sighs> wouldn't mention her name, but. On, you know, on the other hand, I may have some very pious friends who have been doing this for the last 40 years. You know, I don't know, but she was the only one that shared it. And if, um, <laughs> and the reason I know it is because she actually vetted me. <gasps> <laughs> Lois! Yes, and when I wrote that story, I had three gals, I know all of them single, who wrote to me or called me and said, you know, that happened to me. So I guess there are married couples out there that, you know, I, but I was shocked. I thought I was the only one in the world this happened to. And then to find out. Jesus. That three other women I knew 
had the same experience. So, so you know, like dating apps actually really um, truncate this experience too. So <laughs> they really do because because couples will be on there. And sometimes they're a little fishy, you know, because it'll be just the guy and he's cute and I match with him. And then he tells you, oh, well, also my wife wants to be. I'm like, well, Jesus, let, just be up front with it. Because, you know, there might be a night where some other single woman's like, you know what? I could get down with the couple. Let's go. You know, but it, it, I think some of the hush hush vetting of it all Oh God! I listen, Lois. At that point, he can just go. I don't want to. I don't. I do not need that man that bad. But good for them that they figured it out. What a great story! Yeah, I mean, and I will tell you this: when he passed away, I knew she would follow within six months, and that is really? what happened. And they were not elderly when they passed. I mean, wow. you know. Um, so they were just meant to be. They were. They were the soulmates. They were a vi- they really were, and they were a very adventuresome couple. Whether they climbed the Himalayas, whatever they did, I mean, they 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 lived life to the fullest. It was wow. second marriages for both of them, and um, they really connected. You know, so listen to each his own. But, so I um, wonder. So that obviously means he had to express or to have cheated. So, you know, I, I love Justin's advice, like start slow. I do feel like anyone entering a relationship that's like potential to be long term in general needs to have a conversation about sexual appetite and see if they like match up even, you know, because there will be frustrations down the road. And that's a really good precursor to, okay, how much can I share with this person? How much of the sexual fantasy is act outable with this person? And and let's try this first. So you are kind of like, I love the idea of like, well, what about this next? Okay, well, what about this? Oh, you don't like that? Okay, great. What happens if after you do it, what are the odds that it's actually great or not? Like, Well, here we go. Because this is the last of what I'll read from the good doctor. Okay. He said that he found most people who acted on their fantasies reported that the experience was at least as good, if not better, than they were expecting and said that it improved their relationship. Wow. Wow. However, it isn't something you want to leap into or take lightly. There are things to be both gained and potentially lost by making fantasy reality. I'm sure. So be sure to educate yourself on the rewards and risks, risks before taking that step. That's very wise from somebody who obviously did their research. And probably experienced it as well. So I think as with anybody, el- uh, anything else you do in life, you really, before you do it, have to weigh the risk gain factor. So I do believe ultimately that life is for living. That's why kind of like the fantasies in the back of my head always tickle me. Like, you know, especially being a Catholic, I was raised thinking there's going to be a heaven and everything you want's in heaven. I, I learned it down the road. This is where you get heaven. This is where you learn to live. You know, this is the opportunity to live. So I always wonder, kind of probably how a man wonders when he's about to walk down the aisle. Is this really the last vagina I'll ever see? You know, I wonder, like, do I have to fulfill these fantasies in order to have lived fully? But in order to make that choice, I haven't done this yet. What's the risk and reward to fulfilling those? That's That's exactly right. That's exactly right. That's great. So, well. Lois, thanks for all this fantastic information. (laughs) That fascinating story that I fucking loved. It's so good. (laughs) Um, What do you want to talk about next week? Well, I'm thinking that next week we should talk about safe sex. I think that's right. Those of us over 50, you know. Um, what I'm afraid a lot of people do. And in retrospect, you know, I've been one of them. 
Whoa. Whoa, yeah. Once you're beyond the getting pregnant stage, you tend to minimize the um, steps you need to take to remain safe health-wise. Yep. So that's what we're going to talk about next week. And now we're getting more into the dating. Um, sure. You know, we or rather the single... Single, single dom of, of it all. Yes. We, we really, I think, did... Um, at least our viewers thought we did a very nice, nice, wonderful job. We got lots of views on last week's uh, Sex After 50. That was more geared towards long-term couples. And now we're going to talk about, next week we'll talk about single women and sex over 50. I think that's great. And we want to hear from you. What do you, since we're doing the sex world right now, what do you want us to talk about? What's something that interests you about this? You haven't talked to your friends about. You can get in touch with us a bunch of different ways by emailing us over at silverandsensational at gmail.com. You can find us on social media at silverandsensational uh, on TikTok, on Instagram, Facebook. You could message, you can leave a comment here, but Lois, if our friends are watching us on YouTube, what should they be doing? Well, of course, if you haven't done so already, you would really help us tremendously by subscribing. Please, and do that and, and share us with your friends and ask them to subscribe. And then, of course, we would love your comments in the box below. Do hit like and then touch the notification bell so you're made aware of when our next episode drops. It's almost 99.9% .9 our dear Jessica make sure that we begin a new episode airing every Friday. Oh, that is, it's, it's, a, it's no mean task. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So Jessica, yes. thank you so much to all of you out there. Thank you for tuning in. We appreciate your support and we look forward to having you again next week. Oh, thank you so much for everything, Lois, and sharing this awesome information. Bye now. Thanks so much for watching us today. And please hit like, subscribe, and do share us with your friends. And again, we love having you as our audience. Stay with us. See us every Friday for a new episode.